Buenas tardes, nogalenses, riorequeños, fronterizo aquí de nuestra comunidad de Santa Cruz County. Welcome to El Gringo Más Mexicano on this beautiful Tuesday, November afternoon. How are you feeling? Feeling good. good. All right, I'm here joined with Carlos Ibarra, a local artist, and I mean, an extremely talented local artist who is, among other projects, is currently working on a, a mural right on Morley Avenue. Morley Avenue, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. And, Appreciate it. Thank and, you for the invitation. You know, taking some time out from your, I mean, your tedious work that we were yeah. just talking about. It's a nice break. Yeah. Talk <laughs> yeah. to friends. That's for sure. Yeah. For sure, right? Well, thank you so much. Thank you. So before we get started on, on the show, I just want to remind the community that the um, community food bank is still holding their food drive. It's going on for two more days until the 30th. And in order to donate, get some canned goods, some dry goods, and donate, take it over to Cropper's Nogales Auto Center and help them stuff the back of a 2024 Chevy Silverado. We're going to fill up the back of that car as much as we can and give that food to families who are in need this holiday season and make sure that they have a good holiday dinner. So um, please, um, you know, whatever you can, just take it down to Croppers and they will accept it. And that is, again, that is going on until the 30th, November 30th of, um, in, on Thursday, which is actually my son's birthday. He turns 13 this year and it is a nightmare. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into events real quick. All right, first and foremost is the Christmas Village, just right down here on Morley. Have you had a chance to go check it out? Walk I through did, it? Yeah, yeah. Walked by there a couple times. Also. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty yeah, cool it's this nice. year. Really I mean, nice, yeah. So right here in Nasib Karim Park on Morley, that is, it started officially on November 22nd, before they were signing up, but it is officially set up since November 22nd, and will go be, it will stay there until January 7th. And it's this really cute, I mean, the decorations, it's uh, these little houses. I mean, they even have the house from Up. From the movie Up, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I've actually walked through it, I think, three times now already. Just, you know, just, just to, to take it in and take yeah, a break from things. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, coming up this weekend is the Christmas Light Parade, City of Nogales' Christmas Light Parade. That is Saturday, December 2nd. Downtown on Morley, there's going to be food trucks. Um, first time ever. Yeah. I'm not, I'm act I know that they're going to have it on Morley. I'm not sure where. The food trucks are going to be. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah. So, I mean, Higos um, Coffee and Chilorios is going to be there, the one who just opened up a mm -hmm. location right next to where your mural is. Um, and there, have you eaten there, man? Yes. It's so good. It's so good. It's so yeah. good. I yeah. ate there today. Yeah, really? Yeah. Awesome. And they've got, they've got great food, good coffee, and I believe they even have hot cocoa, right? I uh, don't know about the cocoa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably for this, mm -hmm. they will. Um, antojitos, antejitos uh, and... Um, Granny's Goodies will also be there, among others. So come on down to Morley to watch the Christmas Parade this Saturday uh, and, and get some good food while you're at it. Nice. Also, we will be broadcasting the parade. Um, I believe that is our plan. We'll be broadcasting the parade in its entirety right here downtown. Then, also this weekend, um, the Tumacacri Outdoor Market uh, is December 2nd and 3rd from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So go down to Tumacacri and then head over to the, to the um, parade. That is hosted by Abe's Old Tumacacri Bar right across from the Tumacacri Mission Historical Park. Um, then, also coming up this month is Coronado, the new evidence. You, have you seen about that? No. So it's actually this documentary about um, new evidence that they found of Coronado's path through Santa Cruz County. Um, our, uh, our other host, one of our other hosts, Maritza Higuera, she got a chance to interview the documentarian, mm -hmm. an Emmy award-winning documentarian, and the guy who, who's been dedicated his life to discovering the path that, that Coronado took. Wow. Yeah, really, and, really and cool. What's the, what's the event? Well, so they're gonna actually be playing the film. They're gonna have like, it's not necessarily the premiere, but they're gonna be having showings for the film at the um, movie theater. Oh, right here awesome. at Oasis Cinema. That's really interesting. Yes. Um, then on December, next weekend, there's a lot of things happening, I mean, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> it's December weekend, everything's going on. The weather's a little bit cooler. People like to be out. Mm -hmm. Not too cold. I mean, we don't get too cold here, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's too nice. cold for me. I, I, get, I get cold <laughs> easy. But it is the 12th annual pancake breakfast at Wisdom's Cafe. Um, in Tubac, and that is Saturday, December 9th from 8 to 10 a.m. A, a ticket is $15 and it includes pancakes, eggs, bacon, fruit, and coffee. All proceeds go to benefit the Anza Trail. And tickets are available 
um, at Wisdom's Cafe, or you can call 520-841-6944 to register your tickets. So they, they are limited, so you better jump on it. Then in Rio Rico, actually just down the street from my house, um, is Santa's Garden of Lights. And it's right where the community center is or where, um, where the, the fitness center and the yeah. swimming racket club is. Mm-hmm. Right in front of that, they have this little, little section and they decorate it every year. Um, and they, they're going to do on Friday, December 8th, starting at 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. They're going to be doing, um, they're going to have Santa, they're going to have Jamburo cookies and more. The Rio Rico High School Jazz Band is going to be playing and the Rio Rico Hawks Dance Team will also be there performing. The address for this is 391 Avenida Coramundi. It's in Rio Rico, Arizona. District 35, Santa Cruz Valley Unified School District 35 is doing their Stuff the Bus um, event on Saturday, December, actually this, this Saturday, Saturday, December 2nd from 9 to 12. That will be at Walmart. And that what it is, is it's a toy drive. So members of the community, they can buy a toy and then donate it. And it will, they'll, basically the point is to stuff a bus full to give to kids who might not have be getting presents this Christmas. <clears throat> and then last but not least, this is actually a two weekend event. M&M Family Orchard is their Christmas vendor festival. Um, they've been doing, M&M Family Orchard, they've been doing something almost every weekend since they, since they opened up this year. It's, it's very cool. They have tons of local vendors, a lot of community participation. The first one is gonna be Sunday, December 3rd, um, and that will be from 12 to 5 p.m. And then the second one will be Saturday, December um, 9th. And again, 12 to 5 p.m. Be local vendors, outdoor Christmas fun for the whole family. And I learned today that Santa Claus will be there. Santa Claus will be there for both nights. And uh, I don't want to give it away, but this is the best Santa Claus that anybody has ever, ever seen, for sure. Um, And it is at 310 Camino Caballo in Rio Rico, Arizona. So show up and hopefully we'll see you there. Again, that's December 3rd and December 9th from 12 to 5 p.m. Now moving on to news. The Morley Gate, the pedestrian gate is still closed due to construction, which went past the the date that they said of November 25th. Questions about the reopening, um, if you, they've, they've asked the uh, Customs Board of Protection and those questions are being redirected to Mexico's Secretary of National Defense. Um, since the closure, businesses of bo- on both sides of the fence have been affected. I mean, obviously here on Morley we felt the effects, but also in, in Nogales, Sonora, at La Roca, which is just a few feet south from the gate, has also felt felt a little bit of a crunch from the gate crossing, especially during the holiday season when a lot of, there's a lot of movement to cross. Um, second item of news, the Santa Cruz County Jail will soon begin to hold detainees for Customs and Border Protection. Um, the measure was approved by the County Board of Supervisors on November 14th um, without any discussion. Detainees will be low-risk individuals who previously had to be bused all the way to Florence and, and be held there. CBP will be billed at a higher rate so this is, this is some benefit to our community. CBBP will be held, billed at a higher rate per individual than the county is usually allowed to charge for other agencies based on the agreement that they've made. Um, and detainees will be held in the unused portions of the facility, which, which in recent years have become, have been, become you know, just empty space. Then on Wednesday, um, November 22nd, Nogales Fire Department evacuated three buildings on West Industrial Park Drive due to a chemical spill. Did you hear about this one? Yeah. 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 The spill occurred when a pallet of methyl mercaptan tipped over, causing at least one drum of those containing the chemical to be ruptured and spill. The spill was contained quickly and firefighters were able to prevent any of the chemical from reaching the water table. Methyl mercaptan is a chemical often used in the production of jet fuels, pl- pesticides, and plastics. So thank goodness it did not reach the water table. <laughs> All right, so thank you to our, um, our friends at Nogales Fire Department for getting that under control. Now it's time for the interview. The interview. All right, so the best part. So again, I am here with local artist, famed local artist, Carlos Ibarra. And um, how's it going? It's going really well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. How, are you, how are you dealing with the wind? It's been better. The last couple of days, it's picked up a little bit, but yeah. not so much that, that it's a problem. Yeah. But there definitely have been, there was a couple months where 
it wouldn't stop. It was every day. Yeah. And it's a challenge because the paint is acrylic and it dries very fast anyway. Yeah. But add some wind to it. And oh, it yeah, just, it's like it almost like, instant. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge, yeah. But, uh, but I mean, it's great. Uh, actually, mornings have been a little chilly, but the rest of the day is uh, it's pretty comfortable. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. And how, how, often, how many hours a day do you work? Or like when you, I imagine it varies, you know? Yeah, it, it um, recently I, I've had to start um, a little later because the sun obviously comes out um, a little later. Days are a little shorter. Uh, also have to stop a little earlier because, yeah, like right around 4.30 or so, um, the light starts to get a little gray, so it's a little challenging, but uh, definitely by 5 o'clock I have to stop. So in the summer, you know, I could put in 11 hours, 12 hours in a day, wow. um, yeah, but as the days get shorter, obviously I'm kind of forced to, to uh, also shorten my, my work day. Of course. But also at this point, I've been working on this for so long that I'm also exhausted, so I, I don't complain too much if I have to, you know, settle for seven hours a day. So yeah, yeah but I still try to put at least the seven hours, eight if I can. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's get let's get more into into the. Uh, yeah. I mean, the mural. I mean, that's that's the big thing right now. You know, right. that's that's what everybody's talking about. But it's it's obviously. I mean, we're looking at that. It's not your only work of art. I mean, right. you've you've got a history of yeah. of, of some incredible art. Yeah. And I yeah. want what I really want to know is well, I mean. Starting off, tell us about yourself. You know, give us a quick intro of who you are. Um, well, I was born here, uh, Nogales, Arizona, um, and I just, as a kid, I always, I always uh, enjoyed drawing, especially. Um, actually, it was just drawing. I didn't start working with color till much, much later. But as a kid, always drawing, 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 and it was a way to get my dad's attention. I think we all have that story about like, you know, <laughs> wanting a little more attention from your parents. And uh, my dad was a big art lover and um, he had a bunch of art books, which I would spend hours and hours as a kid uh, looking at and then trying to draw like I would use them as references to draw uh, a lot of a lot of drawings of Christ because <laughs> yeah. it was a, it was in so many art books that it was. Uh, I mean, even if it's not a religious art book, there's so many yeah, religious is artwork. In, is in, in the history of art, yeah, there's yeah. so much. Uh, I mean, the whole Renaissance was almost a religious movement. Yeah, you know? the the biggest patron was the was the Vatican, and so yeah. it just made sense that you know a lot of the art that's left over from those times it's it's religious art. Yeah, and they were and, also better at preserving their art than other people were for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the money was there, and <laughs> yeah. they, the value, how they valued it, and, yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, for sure. So it survived uh, um, up to this day, and it's in art books are just full of uh, religious artwork, for and sure. and uh, so yeah, you know, looking at a lot of art, drawing a lot, and uh, I enjoyed it, and at some point they started telling me that I was good at it. And, well, uh, so well, the, the question is for that. I, one of the questions that I have is, I mean, you said you started early. And you, yes. again, you did it to kind of get your dad's attention, but when did yes. you realize that you loved it? You know, that's a very interesting question because I don't, I don't think there's ever been a moment where I've been, I, where I've, where I've, I've felt that I chose it because I loved it. Interesting. It, it was, there's definitely, there, there have been moments yeah, where you when I'm working yeah. and there's something about what, something that turned, the way it turned out uh, that I love the way it looks and it makes me glad that yeah. I, I get to do this. Um, but there are moments, but I don't, it, 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 it was always a thing to get uh, attention from my dad. And then that eventually led to people telling me I was good at it. And then at some point, and I, this, this, I'm still talking about like elementary school at yeah. this point. Um, I realized that like, well, this is something I could, I could spend my time doing. And, and uh, when I was in elementary school, I would spend w way more time drawing than doing schoolwork. Um, and then I would give the drawings away. And there was like a line of people, wow. uh, my you know, fellow students and friends yeah. who were like, hey, can I have the next one? And first grade was like the Dukes of Hazard car. I would, <laughs> I would draw, that. what was it? It has a name, right? Uh, I don't remember, but yeah, it, it does. has a name. I can't remember, but uh, uh, yeah, I would spend all the time just drawing the Dukes, Dukes of Hazard car, and then I would give it away. Uh, third or fourth grade, it was ET, okay. uh, and I would give those away. A few years ago, I went to a party Should've at a charged. friend's house. I know I should have. <laughs> I've I've always been very bad at the business side, so like, it, yeah, I should have been on that. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, a few years ago, I went to a party at a friend's house, and uh, both of, actually, he I met him in high school, but uh, his wife Audrey was with me all the way through uh, elementary school and middle school. But and this is like maybe six, seven years ago. Uh, we were talking, and then she said. I still have the ET drawing that you gave me in fourth grade. Oh. Yeah, which was great. I didn't see it. Yeah, uh, I probably didn't want to look at yeah. it. <laughs> I would have been so critical. I would have been like, oh, no, I, I need it. Yeah. This fourth grader sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, but uh, uh, so, yeah, I just spent you know, a lot of time drawing. And then my dad eventually, I remember him, him telling me, like, you know, don't do anything with paint. Just keep drawing, keep drawing. Once mm -hmm. you get very comfortable with drawing, once you know, like, you have command of it, then you can start to introduce um, Other some things, color, yeah. yeah, paint. Or, and I kind of took that to heart. Um, there was a when I was in high school, I actually no, I, eighth grade, I got I became very interested with in a, a, with political cartoons. Okay. Yeah, and I started doing that. And yeah, that's right about the age I think interest for political. Yeah, you start getting into like yeah, yeah, like what's going on in the world. Yeah. And uh, and you have this kind of righteous sense of like I know I know better. Yeah. As an eighth grader, uh, but. But the Nogales International started publishing the, the the drawings I was doing, and the very first, cool. the very very first political cartoon I did, um, actually it, it was when when uh, Governor Meekum was impeached here in Arizona. Okay. And Mofford then was uh -huh. uh, elected. And so eighty six. Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah. I know because I've written about it. You have really. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's really cool is that somehow the drawing, uh -huh. the original drawing got to Rose, uh, Governor Mofford's hands. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she, and I completely unexpected, just one day, I get something in the mail, and I open it up, and it's this, this little package, and it was her first photograph, photo as a governor, signed photograph as a governor, very first one that she sent to me to wow. thank me for this political cartoon I did. That uh, is which so Which obviously cool. was in her favor. Though, yeah, of know, course, so. yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, but being the stupid eight-year-old, Eight, nine, eight eighth, grader. Uh, eighth grader. I lost it at yeah. some point. A couple of years later, like I had no idea where it was. And I, w another one of those things where I wish I would have, um, I would still have it. I would have held on to that. But uh, yeah. And then when I graduated high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do again because I'd never had that feeling of like I really love doing art and this yeah. is what I what I want to do for the rest of my life. I really didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Know. I loved music and I wanted to do more on the music side, but uh, but I knew that I was better at the visual side than mm -hmm. on the music side. So if I went up to Tucson after I graduated from high school and uh, didn't quite find my place there and came back and I had a little bit of money uh, in the bank and my dad was like, why don't you go to Guanajuato? This, I, I, he, another one of his books that I used to spend hours looking at was a little like a tourist book of the city of Guanajuato and San Miguel de Allende. And there was a, in San Miguel, there is, I'm assuming still, a pretty well-known art school. And so that's what I did. I went, uh, I went to San Miguel for about a year and uh, did more drawing there, came back, and then ended up at a graphic art school. In and you started working with photos by this time? Not yet. Not yet, okay. When I came back, then went to, again to Tucson, mm -hmm. went to a graphic art school, that's where I started working. Eventually, I think it was like the last couple months of, of that program I did. Uh, it was an associate's degree. Okay. Uh, we started working wor more with color, and I started working with uh, colored pencils. Okay. Um, actually, I think that was the first. Uh, maybe it was some watercolor before that. But, um, but I picked up the colored pencil very quickly, very easily, and I did this portrait of uh, George Harrison. Oh, which cool. Was, yeah, which is, it was great. Like, I was surprised that I was able to do as good a job on it as I did. As you did. <laughs> yeah, and there was one day where, like, I was, I was, uh, I guess I was tired that day in class, and I had the drawing in front of me, and I was working on it, and um, almost done with it, and I fell asleep on it, <laughs> and then, like, uh, when the class was over, one of my friends, like, woke me up and was like, dude, like, it's time to go. <laughs> and I got up, and uh, colored pencil is wax. Yeah. So when you use this, uh, you, you, you use it over paper, it's basically, it's just a film of wax over the paper. And it's essentially a, like a fine point crayon kind of yes, thing. Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. 
And so I got up and my, George Harrison's hand was on my hand. Like I picked what? it up <laughs> and I had to redo the whole thing that was almost done. Uh, but I did, I, I finished it and it was great. It, 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 uh, it looked great. And that gave me the confidence that I could work with color. And I started to understand like the subtleties of color. And, uh, not a lot of color theory. I didn't know much of it yet, but, but I, I, I could figure it out. Um, and so that gave me the confidence to then try oils. And very quickly, I lost my confidence. Oh. <laughs> oils is yeah. such a great medium, but it's, it's, hard, to it's hard to get used to it. It's, it, can, it. If you don't know how to control it, it's just messy. It's, mm, okay. and especially that like, there are certain colors that for some reason they reproduce. Like, there, there are certain colors that like, you use them and then two weeks later, you're still finding it Everywhere. in one of your socks. And it, it's crazy. <laughs> but... Uh, um, but eventually, I picked up. Uh, I picked up on it. Uh, I took some classes here with Daniel Guerrero, but a lot of people in Nevada know and love him. Um, I took some classes with him. I felt very discouraged, but he was the guy who was like, "No, no, like you, you know what you're doing. Just keep, yeah. keep going." So I'm very grateful for that advice. Um, and then, yeah, over time, like I started to get more comfortable. At, at some point, I realized, or I thought, that I was very. So much to learn, but but eventually I did. I mean, I've been doing it for over twenty five years now, and so yeah. I mean, um, I think that the thing that I like, the thing that I'm grateful for in terms of my own like character or personality, or is is that I, I never settle for like oh that's good enough. Yeah. Um, sometimes that gets me in trouble because I end up spending too much, too much time on something. Right? But but also the the great benefit of that is that. I'm always going to keep learning. I could, I yeah. might be 85 years old and and still know that there's something new that I can learn. And it's true. It's not like you're lying to yourself. Yeah. There is always something new or something that you could do a little bit better. And, and uh, you know, well, I'd rather. Well, I'm sorry. That's what I was. Gonna, I was actually going to say about what you mentioned looking back at things. I think for for maybe I mean, I mean it goes probably goes beyond artistic expression, but for um, any form of artistic expression, whether it's painting, sculpting, right. or or writing, I think that looking back. Mm -hmm. is important mm -hmm. for two yes. reasons. I think mean, one, it gives you confidence boost because yeah. you're like, holy shit, I'm way better than I was. But it also, it can and it should put things into perspective for you. Right. Because you realize that as much better as you are, you s there's still more. Yes. And you can still get better and still learn Absolutely. more. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the things I, I have some experience like teaching classes. Um, um, and the thing that I've always enjoyed about most about about teaching is how much you learn by teaching something about even if it's even if, if you're explaining something that in your head makes perfect sense it's not till you break it down and ex like try to explain it to someone that it really crystallizes that like you realize that a lot of the stuff that you're doing right you've been doing by instinct mm, yeah. uh, right and and once you have to explain it and talk about it then you have to like Make sense of it. Like, yeah. why, why does this work this way? And it's a great way to. It's a great way to learn. Um, sure. I remember I had a class. Um, it was a uh, art history class, and I remember the professor saying, uh, "Do you guys know the best way? The best thing you can do to be a better writer." Um, and I didn't. I didn't. Scream it out because like I didn't want to be that guy. That's like yeah. look at me, I know. Yeah. But I knew exactly what he was gonna say, uh -huh. and what he said was like read, yeah. read as much as you can. And that made a lot. It made a lot of sense to me, uh, and I associated. I mean, with painting, it's different. It's not like look at a lot of art and you'll be a better. No, no. But uh, but if you talk about it, if you explain it, if it, it's just a different way of like rewiring, like. How you go about doing things, Absolutely. and it and it just everything connects a little bit better. So so yeah, I, I I've enjoyed that a lot, and I've learned a lot by teaching, and I think also when I paint, it's like when I studied for finals when I was in college, I would always to to get the information in my head, I would always pretend that I was teaching it to somebody because oh. at that point I had I had the painting That's experience, the, the yeah. uh, teaching painting that I knew that if you verbalize it if you try to explain you learn a lot from it yeah so when i was studying for finals in, in college that's what i would do i would i would pretend that there was somebody sitting next to me 
and uh, um, it's kind of sad that I had to pretend. <laughs> but uh, and then I, you know, I, I I'd say it out loud, and, yeah. and I could retain the information much better. I could make the connections much better, and so yeah, um, I don't know why it led led to this, but. Uh, I guess what I was saying was that, that it, it took me time to get to work with color, but once I started working with color, I found ways of trying to get better and better and better and, and, and never settling for like, all right, that's good enough. Uh, no, yeah, always keep learning. Very cool. So, um, you know, as you've been saying this, everything that you've been saying, every time I have a conversation with you, I, because I, I, I'm not a painter, but mm -hmm. I put things into perspective with, with my writing, right? That's, that's my frame of reference, reference for, for my artistic expression, right? And holy crap, like it, it aligns. Like this, yeah. like, I've learned so much more about my own writing in the same way that you, like, when you start to explain it to somebody. Because mm -hmm. you, like you said, you do it by instinct, and I hadn't, I hadn't necessarily put into this, but, but then when you start to explain it to somebody, you break it down, because right. you have to. Because right. you can't just say, oh, you just do it and it happens. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just do what I do. No. Yeah. 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 No. And that's, that's, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and I mean, and, you know, you talked about your education, you talked about, but, but let's talk about your influences. I mean, do you have specific influences about your, for your art? I mean, obviously, books upon books upon yeah. books of art history from your, like, from your dad's collection yeah. is part of it, but... Yeah, um, for sure, especially, like, when I first started. Um, as a kid, I was all about the Renaissance, because a lot of the books were, you know, Michelangelo, Da Vinci. Yeah. And that's what you learned about when you were young. That's what that's the, cool. Those are the big guys, yeah, like that song, which, uh, which this is... Uh, uh, I don't know if we want to get into that territory, but I, I have a little bit of a, uh, the, the Dutch were overlooked, um, yeah. I guess that's well, as, as much as I would we, say. Which you might get to a little bit in the trivia, right? Okay, <laughs> yes, right, right, right. But, uh, but yeah, but the, the big names that everybody knows, household names, you know, yeah. the Renaissance, obviously, Michelangelo, Raphael, uh, Da Vinci, um, and so those were the first ones, and I think those were, um, they were really, actually, that was, it was a good influence because I was just doing drawing, and the the draftsmanship of those Renaissance painters, um, probably Raphael's maybe like known more for like his color, mm -hmm. uh, um, not that Da Vinci Michelangelo didn't do a good job with color, but but their draftsmanship was so good. Also, so, those three, so I think Raphael is one of the most, the least discussed. Yes, he's sure. probably the less of the three that people would know, yeah. uh, unless you're talking about Ninja Turtles. Or, yeah. you know, but, but in terms of art, yeah, um, obviously very well-known artist, but yes, the Michelangelo and Da Vinci definitely take like, the top spots, yeah. um, in, in my opinion, for good reason, um, for my taste. But, um, but they're, they're just, they were so good at drawing, the, just the draftsmanship. And I remember spending a lot of hours looking at the drawings, not necessarily the paintings. Maybe because I because I was drawing and because I was trying to imitate and yeah. learn from them, uh, so I just I would gravitate uh, toward the, the drawings. But so yeah, as a kid, those were very very big. And then um, and then you know, Dukes of Hazard, E.T. <laughs> yeah, uh, I went through that phase <laughs> from the Vinci to Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I kind of stopped actually for a long time. Middle school, I did a little bit of drawing. I got into the political cartoon stuff. Okay. Uh, so, so the, your influences had shifted from. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking about fine art that much anymore. Yeah. Um, there were. My dad had this book of political cartoon Mexican political cartoonists who were incredible. They were. Mm -hmm. They were geniuses. It was a little book. Yeah, there's like incredible Mexican. Yes. Yes. yes really incredible. Yeah, they're just very intellectual. Very yeah. you know, beautiful drawings and. Um, and so that was a big thing for me for a long time. Um, but it, again, I was just sticking to drawings. Um, and then through high school, I kind of forgot about drawing. Um, it was most, mostly music, uh, which I loved. Um, which can influence this form of art in other ways. It, eventually, yes. Yeah. And I'll get to it because that's a really good point. Um, I told, well, I'll get to that part. But um, the, 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 yeah, throughout high school, it was all music. But you're right. I think it helped me also wire my brain artistically yeah. in an interesting way, so that when I came back to drawing and, and eventually painting, uh, yeah, it was it was making my it was making me work in a certain way. But um, and then after after high school, um, eventually when I started 
painting after going to Guanajuato, after doing the associate's degree in Tucson for graphic design, and then realizing I want to I want to start I want to learn how to paint, going with taking classes with Daniel Guerrero, and then eventually just kind of going my own route. Uh, then I start getting into like painting, and then the influences become for sure Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo. Probably for the most part that was it. I didn't turn this off today. As long as it's green, you're good. Okay. I don't think it's green. Is it working? Yep. Okay, we're good. Um, <laughs> sorry, but um, well, so let me let me yeah. let me just ask you because this is this is something that I'm you know I'm curious about. I mean, I know artists experiment, mm -hmm. right? I mean, and you 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 find new ways to do it, and you you explore different types of you know of, of different art forms. Mm -hmm. uh, so, have you ever tried to do a Picasso style? Uh, yes, actually, when I, again, early on, um, I'm, I've never been a big fan of Picasso. You're good about Ali. Uh, uh, some stuff, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's Picasso, the, the interesting thing about, for me, about Picasso is that even though I'm not a huge fan of, of the guy, yeah. I do think he, he painted what could arguably be considered the greatest painting of all time, which is Guernica. Mm. I love Guernica. It's an, just an incredible, incredible work of art. I read a book about the process that he went through to uh, to, create to, to create that painting. It's it's and and I think that for me, art is much more than just the painting. That's why I like yeah. to I like to read like biographies and artists. Um, I like to read stories on like the making of a of a work of art, whether it's painting or yeah. a song or. Um, the time about movies. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, um, because it, I think that's where the art is. I don't, I don't, I don't think of a painting as a work of art. A painting yeah. is either a, a, a beautiful painting or a or an ugly painting. But there, but the art is everything else that's, for sure, that either led to it or what it's trying to say or what, like it, it's it could be an ugly painting and yeah. be an amazing, incredible work of art because there's something more to it. I agree one hundred percent because I like so there are different ways to look at art or read a book or watch a movie or, or you know. You see what's on the canvas. Mm -hmm. That's the first way, right? It's just looking at what's on the canvas. Mm -hmm. The other way is to try to see into the canvas, mm -hmm. which is you know either way, the way that it speaks to you personally, mm -hmm. or trying to decipher what the artist was trying to say, right? Mm -hmm. But then the third way is to examine the artist mm -hmm. while they were painting that, mm -hmm. and to really understand that you have to know everything about the artist beforehand, because everything from the moment of birth to the moment that they put down the paintbrush yeah. helped create that painting. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I think that, I think that uh, uh, for certain perspectives, see that, I think artists see that perspective more than anyone else. Yeah. Because we, you know, artists identify that everything in my life before that led to this yeah. created this artwork. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very psychological exercise. Yeah. Everything that came before go, get, goes in there. Because yeah. we're all like we're making choices based on our own life and experiences, and 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 that yeah, absolutely that. In fact, I think that should be in the art. If it's not, um, yeah. then it's then it's you know it's a pretty painting. Yeah, uh, I've done like a lot of commission stuff, a lot of portraits, which I love doing. I love yeah. doing portraits, um, but to some extent, I look at portraits as like just a. a Potentially okay. beautiful painting. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. If there's much more to it. Um, there can be. Yeah, for sure. You know, especially that. Well, yeah, there can be. But um, but no, yeah, it's it's it, art is much more than just like the thing, the sculpture, or the or the the monologue, or the painting, or what. There's yeah. it's everything else that's wrapped into. It. And a good artist can do that. A good yeah. artist can can make uh, people feel something out of what they're reading or seeing or tasting or, yes. or, or you know. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's uh, going back to the influences, um, Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, like, really spoke to me uh, at that time. Uh, still, but, you know, you grow and you change. But, well, you know, all, but, everything that influenced before, in a way, still influences you now. Oh, yeah, there's, there's definitely, know. there's definitely. I mean, one of the, you know, been working on this mural and one of the, I had always wanted to work on a mural, like a big mural, um, and I really hadn't had the chance. I, there, were, there were times when like it was about to happen for whatever reasons it didn't come about, 
So this is the first like actual big, you know, public yeah, mural. It's, it's big. It's a large, yeah, it's a large mural. But that's been with me since I started because Dio Rivera was such an influence uh -huh. that I remember like I wanted to do that. Like I wanted to wow. paint these large things on walls and public spaces where people could just, you don't have to walk into a gallery or a museum or a home. You could just, you know, be doing your Christmas shopping and look up and just visit. Like, yeah. That, that always appealed to me. So yeah, definitely huge influence. Um, Rivera, uh, Frida Kahlo, Frida Kahlo, very much in a like a, in a. Uh, Frida Kahlo definitely made me think, made me wonder like why did she decide, why did she make that choice to put like this little boat next to her foot in a bath or whatever the yeah. like like the storytelling in her painting uh, always appealed to me and. Uh, um, but yeah, Dali, Dali, I had, I had moments. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, in fact, I think there are paintings of mine that like you can see a little bit of a uh, surrealism uh, taste. Um, but but it's only like a handful of paintings of Dali that I that I like. Yeah. Uh, Picasso, like I said, uh, not a huge fan. Although I think the Gernika is one of the greatest paintings yeah. ever. So even even someone who you don't great can create something great. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I would say like I I, I would call him great. Yeah. Yes. Um, but not necessarily like my cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, so a, a tea that is, everybody likes, but I don't. Mushroom tea. tea is probably <laughs> yeah, really good. Like, <laughs> like I, mushroom tea is not my cup of tea, mm -hmm. but it's still a great uh, tea for some people. Yeah. For a lot of people. Um, but but. Uh, yeah, and, and then probably at this point, the, the two that have had the biggest effect on me, I think, although I, I don't know if that's true because I don't, I don't know that you can see it in the art, but in the, I don't like to call my, my own stuff art, I'm just okay. in my paintings. And then I'll call it art for you. Yeah, thank you. Because it is. It. <laughs> I love it. it. You know, if somebody compliments me that way, that's great. Yeah. Uh, it, I, to me, it just seems like presumptuous for me to be like, mm -hmm. oh, my art. But my paintings, um, I don't know that it's, you can see it in my paintings, but I probably the two that I love the most, artists that I love the most now at this, at this point in my life, are um, Vermeer, Johan Vermeer, okay. uh, and uh, Vincent van Gogh. Uh, both Dutch, yep. which goes back to what I was saying yeah. earlier. But uh, yeah, so yeah, there's definitely. Uh, uh, but the but the thing. Oh, and the thing I was going to lead to with the music um, that I want to get back to is uh, uh, probably the most influential artists um, for me have been musicians, not okay. painters. Uh, Bob Dylan, uh, Silvio Rodriguez, um, uh, Conor Olbers. Um, uh, Music has always been, again, a big part of me. And the thing I was saying earlier about like high school doing music and not doing any drawing, but how that eventually, like it seeps back into the, into the things that you do end up doing later in life, is that, and that I've told people many times, is that when I do a, a painting, it's, I, I'm trying to write a song. Yeah. It's, it, for me, it's a song. I can't, I can't write a song. I'm not, I guess I could, it wouldn't be very good. But, uh, but I know that I can tell a story visually. So every, you know, every time I sit down to do some, create something new, it's, all, it's always in my head, it's almost like I'm sitting down to write lyrics to a song and, and uh, it's kind of the approach and it's just the influence that, that, that uh, music has had on me and musicians have had on me. So. For sure, man. I, I, and I, I think that that is... I, so one thing that I, my, my approach to is I think it's all a form of storytelling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, you can't tell a story without listening to, reading, or, right. see, or visualizing stories, right? right. And, um, and I kind of have this perspective of it. And, and I want to I wanna run this by you and see, get your personal perspective on, on, on what I'm about to say. Sure. I like to look at what I consider to be the history of storytelling. I even teach a class on this to kids, right? Uh, and I go back to cave paintings, mm -hmm. right? So this mural that you're painting right now, when I see it couldn't exist with the cave paintings from 10,000 years ago, mm -hmm. had not existed. And although it is obviously very, very different, they're both artistic expression and they're both forms of storytelling. Right. And I was wondering how, how you feel. I'm so sorry, this contact is really messing right. with my eye. But I was wondering how you, what's your perspective on that? Is. Um, yeah, I think, you know, one time, actually, that same uh, art history class I was talking about with the professor that asked, like, how do you become a better writer? 
Uh, in that in that same class, remember we talked about cave paintings. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a huge part of art history. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, it is, it is yeah, art. Yeah, it's, it's the beginning of it. Yeah, and uh, I can't remember if I read this or if I made it up in my head. <laughs> um, I'd like to think that I made it up because it's such a beautiful idea, but I probably read it. Um, that. It's believed, like one of the theories that um, people back then thought that um, caves or like was like it was the the, um, uh, the the earth had like a womb, like it was oh, where okay. it came from, right? And it was somewhere in in the ground, somewhere within the earth, and that this theory goes that um, the reason that they painted all these animals. Uh, inside these caves is because they were animals that they had hunted mm -hmm. and so what they were doing is they were bringing the animal back into the womb of the earth oh, wow. so that that animal could then the earth could like give birth to it again and I thought it was such a beautiful that is beautiful it, yeah it's a beautiful concept oh my gosh um, I'm gonna use that in my in my storytelling class <laughs> <laughs> yes, right it's, it's a beautiful and I think that gave me um, I, at that point I mean obviously like I'd been around art enough and thought about it enough to know that you know there's there's there there's something deeper to art or painting uh, yeah. than just what you see right there's there's something yeah, behind it um, but that really like stuck with me because I think it really cemented that idea that uh, when you look at a painting don't just appreciate it for you know whether it's beautiful or it's interesting or it has nice colors or all those th all those things are valid but there's more to it like yeah. the, that's not the art. The art is the idea behind it, yeah, and, the, uh, and the story that led to it. Yes, yeah, yes, sure. the reasons, like the reason it was created. It was created out of some kind of like some need, some desperation, or just some being in love, or or you know, being hungry. What whatever led to the creation of like yeah. that story is is to me anyway. But I, I personally like it's much more interesting to me for me to learn about that stuff than to just look at the painting, appreciate it, and and, and walk away. Sure. Um, when I go to museums, um, I try not to stay in a museum more than a couple hours mm -hmm. because I get tired. Yeah. And at some point, like you stop you're, seeing the earth. yes, like you're you walking don't. down and there's like oh there's that Rembrandt, yeah. and then you just keep walking because now yeah. I'm, I'm tired. So so I try to stay, you know keep it to two maybe three hours, but I also am very selective about the the, the paintings that I I yeah. want to see at whatever museum. Uh, because I do want to take a lot of times I know a little bit of the history behind those paintings, so yeah. it's just extra special to sit. Um, I think we'll, we're going to talk about Starry Night. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But that was one uh, years ago in New York. Obviously, um, there was one day I went with some cousins, and the last day we were there, we decided oh, we're all going to kind of do our own thing. Okay. So I I decided to go back to the MoMA we had already been, um, but I wanted to go back and look at certain paintings. And I got there right when they opened, and I had a city pass, so I didn't have to buy a ticket. I didn't have to stand in line. So I had a city pass, and I just walked in. And there was nobody in there other than, like, the staff and whatever. And I went straight to the, I can't remember if it's the third or fourth floor where, they, where the Starry Night is hanging. And there was nobody there. And for, like, a good 30 minutes, it was just me and Starry Night. Wow. And at this point, I knew the story behind yeah. it and why it was created and where it was created, and obviously yeah. who created it. And, and to be able to just like have that context and look at the painting, and then you look at the painting and it's painted in such a hurry. Um, you still see little areas where like a canvas where he didn't he didn't uh, put any paint over, and um, it's just such a great experience. And I, um, but I I I enjoy doing that kind of thing with a painting is it, I think actually when I when I you know look at other people's uh, people I know and they, they they do something I like I end up asking a lot a lot of questions about like why like what why why what were the reasons and what because I, I yeah it's that that side of it of art is much more interesting to me than, the, than just the visual part for sure and you know I, I gotta admit that I knew I knew a little bit about Starry Night before I started doing the research for the trivia, mm -hmm. but the story that I, you know, learning the story about it, 
makes it so much cooler. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about your mural. Mural. Like, I mean, we we thrown it in there. Yeah. But let let's talk about this mural. Where it is. Why. Mm -hmm. And um and you know your. The details that are you. Mm -hmm. Right. So so this mural. What is it? Um. It, the mural is a story about. It's a a story about Novales. Um. And specifically, I guess. Uh, for me, it's a story of, of growing up in Novales. Not just me, but what I assume, like, people who yeah. grew up here, like, especially, like, of the years I was here, growing up here, um, what it was like uh, and how it's changed over time. And time is a big element in the, in the mural. Um, there, there's, there's a lot of elements in the mural that, like, kind of bookend uh, Novales from the 18... 90s to you know present day um, so so time's a big factor and it's because of the idea of having grown up here um, and yeah it's it's a uh, it's mostly what it is it's just the, the, the a history or not a history just a story of, yeah. of Novales. very cool okay so now is this commissioned art um, it started out actually as a commissioned painting because Evan Corey uh, mm -hmm. Also, a lot of people here will know and love. Yes. Um, is he reached out to me? I was living in Phoenix at the time. This is like 2019. Oh, also the weather. Yeah, and he was like, "Hey, would you would you want to do a paint a mural in Novales?" And as soon as he said that, like all those I was mentioning earlier, like all these ideas of like being the first starting out with painting and wanting to do a mural, and so it was an interesting idea immediately. But I just didn't think it would be it would happen. I was living in Phoenix and mm -hmm. I had very little time to visit Novales and much less to stay for Novales for an extended period of time. So I just I was kind of wishy washy about it. And he was like, oh, well, what about like doing a do you want to do a painting uh, of what could potentially be uh, a mural someday? And I'll buy it. Like I'll commission the painting. And I was like, all right, yeah, we can do that. Um, so that's how it started. Okay. I did the painting. Um, I, I, I warned Evan, though, I was like, look, it's going to have to be a very simple, simple, simple thing, because I don't have a lot of time. Yes, that and, then, and then that, and then that came out, because I can't help myself. Like, uh, again, it goes back to the storytelling. Yeah. Like, I want to tell the story, and I think there's certain elements that need to be in there yeah, it's to not tell a the story. story tell, it's not right? a simple story, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it ended up being uh, slightly more complicated than, or yeah. complex than simple. But... Um, so I did the painting, but it happened when I was finishing the painting, uh, the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And I was in Phoenix, and I hardly ever got to see my family spend any, any time here. So I was like, you know, if I'm going to go back to Novales, like, now would be a good time because I want to be close to family during yeah. this time. It's such a weird, um, everybody's a little scared. And mm -hmm. so, it was um, the right time. It was a good time. It was the right time to come back. Yeah. And so I came back. Um, we had always wanted that wall for this mural, but um, eventually um, the, the two artists from Phoenix had uh, decided that they wanted to donate, I think, a mural. I think, they, I think yeah. they donated it. But they wanted that wall. Mm -hmm. So when Evan, this is before like I even came back to Novales, uh, Evan was like, hey, you know, this is going on. I was like, dude, yeah, if, if, uh, if you need to use that wall for that mural, that's cool, I, I get it still thinking I probably will never paint the mural. Um, mm -hmm. But then by the time I came back, they had to cover, long story, but they had to, yeah. the, the wall was available again. And and so Evan was like, hey, do you want to do it? And I was like, well, I'm here, and I'm going to be here for a while, so yeah, let's do it. So we started doing the fundraising. Uh, it took a while, but um, eventually started working on the mural. And um, and it's, to me, it's a very special wall. I'm really glad that that's, that's where this mural is. Yeah, because... Obviously, the proximity to a, a, a big, big element, obviously, to Novales, and obviously the, the mural, mm -hmm. is the story of these two cities. Yeah. Um, yeah, you and can see it right there. Yeah, you can you see the, mm -hmm. the they're literally in there, um, at least visually, visually represented. Yeah. In yeah. There. Um, but, so, having that be such a big part of the story, both Novales is, um, Having the actual mural so close to the border was special. Yeah, um, it's such a great wall. The size is a, a great size. Yeah, uh, and it's it's like the perfect dimensions for yeah. this painting. Yeah, it's it's yeah. yeah it has a like 
almost cinematic, right? Yeah. With the dimensions of the wall and uh, large scale, and it's up at the top, so it's not, you know, it, hopefully, you know, there won't be. Yeah, but not too, also not too high. You know, it's yes, it's, exactly. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't have to look up too far. To, to, yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's it's just visually, it's great. Um, so so yeah, so then eventually I was like, all right, let's do the mural, and uh, started working on it. And a year and a half later, I'm close to being done. But um, it's yeah, it's been a it's a lot of work, a lot of work, but very cool. Yeah. So I mean, I I know I get we you know you don't want to put pressure on this kind of art because we we talked about the details and those things like that. But is there going to be like a big unveiling or something like that? That's what, yeah, we hope so. Um, there's been a couple bumps in the road, mostly my taking so long, so long to finish. <laughs> but uh, because we did want to, we, we thought we could do it, I think, uh, was it September, October? I think when we, you know, a while back ago, we figured, well, that might be the right time. But, um, but I mean, it's taken so much longer to finish. So at this point, I think... Uh, I'm, I'm sure we're going to do something. Um, we would like to do something big, and I say we because it's uh, you know several people, people from La Línea, Ed and Aisa. Um, the county, I think, had at some point like uh, was willing to uh, sponsor at least part of it. Um, so at this point, I'm not really sure where all that is. Okay. But uh, we'll we'll definitely do something. All right. Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're I'm having a show at La Línea okay. in um, Jan. January. Oh, so it might go January. January. Right, right. So that's what we're hoping is that like I might be able to be done with the mural when the show goes up, and then that way we can do like a two for one. That would be great. Yeah, it would, the timing would be perfect. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, so you know, the mural it, it's it's almost there. Mm -hmm. You got those little details which are important, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. But do you have your next project? Do you know what you plan on working on next? Not so much actually. Well, I have a couple of uh, commission. Uh, pieces that I had to sort of put on the back burner while I finish this, mm -hmm. uh, so I need to finish those. But you know, it's very, it's, it's not going to take very long. It's all, both of them are almost uh, finished. But after that, I just for now I have things that I I've, I've been wanting to do for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so you mean, you're doing art for yourself? Yes, yeah, yeah. Awesome. It's it's like I said, the commissions are great. I love them. Um, done a lot of portraits. Great, I love it. But there are moments where, like, I want to go back to do something that 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 I that I want to do, and then and then sell afterwards. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. Cool. So, yeah. Very cool. Um, so and you're open for commissions. Absolutely. Yeah. Open. Absolutely. All right. So you heard you it. Yeah. And I have one last question before we get into the trivia, and I want to thank you again for for taking the time to to sit here with us and and, and talk Appreciate about it. not just about your art but art in general. I love having conversations about with people who know about things I'm interested in because they're engaging conversations and I learn. Mm -hmm. And so, so I, I want to thank it. you so much for sitting and talking with me. I about appreciate this. it, Joe. Thank you. It, it's been one of my favorite conversations. Appreciate it. Thank you. But the question I have before we start the trivia is: um, so the Mona Lisa, right? Overrated? <laughs> That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, like, so let me put it this way: Do you think Da Vinci, when he finished the Mona Lisa and he looked at it, he thought, "This is what I'm going to be most known for"? Because <laughs> think about really everything else he's done. Yeah. Um, well, from what I remember about the Mona Lisa, he never considered it finished. He carried it with him for the rest of his life, which is why it ended up in France, which yeah. is why the, the Louvre has the Mona Lisa and it's not somewhere in, in Italy. Italy. Uh, but they considered it theirs. Yeah, yeah oh yeah. Mm -hmm. stolen. There's an interesting story about the Italian guy who stole it from, from the Louvre yeah. to get back to Italy. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, I, think, I don't think it's overrated. Um, okay. Kind of for the reasons that we talked about earlier. Okay. It's like all the lead up to why the painting was was created and why it was created the way it was. Sure. So the big thing that Da Vinci was like his big, um, the probably the biggest contribution to painting is the sfumato that they call sfumato, right? Which is this very this hazy look uh -huh. um, where like and the farther something is the atmospheric perspective, the farther something is the less clear the lines, the outlines will be, the, the, yeah. so you get this hazy effect. Um, and the Mona Lisa is full of that, yeah. like, uh, a lot of including in the face, like, there are no lines. Yeah. It's all just kind of these... Yeah, like they're there, but they're not clear. But they're not, exactly, yeah. yeah. And that, that is a huge contribution to 
to painting. And so for that reason, I would say, uh, not that other of his paintings uh, mm -hmm. don't include the same technique. No, of course. But but this is like a simplified version where like it's very clear to see yeah. that you know what he was trying to achieve, uh, picked, um, painterly or yeah, yeah, artistically. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so I think for that reason, also I mean it, I've never seen it in person, so yeah, there's right. that caveat. Yeah. I but was actually I, I was going to ask if you've ever been to the Louvre. No, I've never. I've never. All right. Know. Well, whenever you go, you gotta book me a ticket. To yeah, all right, we'll go. Yeah, we'll go, man. Because uh, it's definitely, definitely uh, something uh, uh, on my list. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but but yeah, it's I mean it's a, it's a beautiful painting. Um, are there better paintings that, of Da Vinci's? I I would say yes. Yeah. But probably because they're more like what's the word like uh, ambitious or bigger yeah. bigger projects or something. But but uh, yeah, no, it's I would say not overrated. Okay. Yeah. All right. Long, long way to get there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now for my favorite part of the show, the trivia. It took us a while to get to it, but here we are. Okay. Um, and the trivia is all focused on Vincent Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. Now, you sent me a picture and of, of your paintings, right? And I saw Van Gogh was there. Yeah. And I thought, okay, so I know a little bit about Van Gogh. I want to learn more. So let's do some trivia. Okay. And let's test how much you know. I'm nervous. All right. Question one. One of Vincent van Gogh's most famous works of art, and a personal favorite of mine, mm -hmm. is a beautiful painting titled The Starry Night. The night sky we see in the painting was from a specific viewpoint that van Gogh looked at during an important time in his life. Mm -hmm. Where was van Gogh when he first saw The Starry Night as depicted in the painting? A, hold on. Oh, okay. Oh, there's multiple. Yeah. So A is his childhood home in Zundert, Netherlands. B, the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp, Belgium, or C, the St. Paul de Mosul Mos uh, uh, Asylum at saint Remy de provence in France, oh, or in France, yeah, that, or that one. C, C, uh, St. Remy. All right, yeah, and it was the view of his east-facing room at the asylum of the early morning sky just before sunrise. Mm -hmm. And he actually per per um, painted this particular view at least 20 times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. All right, so question number two. Good job, good start. That's a really good start. Yeah, that is nice. probably the better start than anybody else has ever had. All right. All right, so in what year was the Starry Night painted? A, 1889, B, 1892, or C, 1883? Um, yeah, 1887. Eight, eight, sorry, sorry. 1889. Yes. Yes, he, so, died, he died in 1890, so it was, yeah. Yes. Yeah. so dates are usually the things that people get wrong. Yeah. You did, you're doing good. I think you're going to get three out of three. All right. All right. This is impressive. I, 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 that, was, that was what? That was B? It was actually A. That was A. It was okay. A, 1889. 1889, yeah. yes. So, obviously, this is, I think, probably the easiest. Okay. All right. Um, and I think that even people who don't know a whole lot about Van Gogh, but know about this particular experience, can answer this question. Okay. All right. Why was Van Gogh admitted to the asylum, and what year did it happen? A, he was forced into the asylum by French police after making repeated threats to a critic, and it was in 1878. B, he admitted himself into the asylum after cutting off his own ear in 1888. Or C, his mother forced him into the asylum as a child because she was frightened by his unconventional artwork. B. B, yes. yes. Uh, absolutely. Man, three out of three. Yeah. That is impressive. <laughs> That's really an applause. I'm going to give myself <laughs> I just, I love Van Gogh so much, and yeah, I would have felt really, really bad if I didn't know him. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad that you that you got the, our first three out of three nice. ever. So, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank Thanks you for, for some you. incredible conversation and thank for you. your artistic uh, artistic contribution right here on More the Avenue. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Having. So, um, we will hopefully see you all this weekend at the Christmas Parade. It, um, show up if you can, hopefully. Again, there will be food trucks. If not, we will be broadcasting the, um, the parade in its entirety right here on We Love No Gallus. And it will be live on Facebook, and then it will be uploaded later to um, YouTube, Vimeo, and our Roku channel, and our Amazon Fire TV channel. So, and you can also tune into all of those platforms to see all of our shows in their entirety. Um, Definitely, if you have a Roku or an Amazon Fire TV, download the We Love No Gallus app and check out everything we've got. We're always talking about cool things going on in this community, 
and um, there's always important information to share. All right, so we'll see you Saturday and we'll see you next week.